566, um, introducing the Warpig. Uh, so the Warpig frame. The Warpig frame is designed to give you maximum flexibility in terms of build options with sort of minimal compromise in terms of weight distribution and things like that. But um, with that said, there are going to be some compromises um, to get the flexibility. I think they're fairly minimal, but it goes hand in hand with talking about weight distribution and build options. And so there was a request for talking about like, um, you know, ideal build setups. And so I thought this would go hand in hand with introducing this frame. So if you're not interested in the frame itself and you want to skip past the advertisement part of it, then I'll put a timestamp down, down below um, with where to skip to. But if you are interested in the frame, um, I'll, we're going to start with that. Okay, so the Warp Pig frame, I'm going to offer it in both 120mm and 110mm motor, motor mount. And in the bigger size, in the 120, it'll be in, um, in both 2mm uh, thick and 3mm thick, in a smaller size, just 2mm thick. And on the motor mounts, I'm doing just these M2, um, which are on 9mm, and that's for your regular 4-hole. Uh, the reason for that, I'm only doing these mounts because I think if you're on this frame, you want to be building with 1103 motors or bigger. So how do we get the flexibility out of this? The way we get the flexibility out of this frame is from the motor mounting holes and also where we put our crossbars to be able to do the zip tie canopy. So these slots here, these outer slots right there, um, those are so designed so that the inner part of that slot is 16 by 16 and then the outer part of that slot is 25.5 by 25.5. So right off the bat, we can do builds with the stacks, the 16 by 16 stacks. And you can see how these um, little bolts are gonna be coming in on the inner edge of that um, slot there. And then you can also do, and I'm using a, an older frame, but it's got that same uh, slotting on there. And then you can see on the outer edge here that the, um, screw holes are at the outer edge of that slot and so the outer edge gives you the 25.5 by 25.5 uh, it's important to note that when you get into some of these oversized wood boards uh, some of these boards are 26.5 by 26.5 and I'm not promising that you can stuff this thing into that thing you can for the most part but I'm just not promising that these big old two to four S boards, all of them will fit in there. Some board, um, like Diatom, Sky Stars, they have 25.5 by 25.5, but some of the other ones, the Nameless, the Beta FPV, um, may not be. So just check that. Okay, so that gets us both our, um, where was it? So our, what I call our square layout, where the whoop board is mounted, rotated 45 degrees. That gets us our 16 by 16. And the last one, which isn't here, but to get our diamond configuration, um, there's uh, FC mounting holes on the two ends here. So I borrowed or stole, co-opted, employed, used, whatever um, term you want to use, the gnarly FPV style where they took, so the gnarly Primo frames, where they have just the screw holes for the, FP, for the FC mount on the two ends and then the other parts of the diamond are flopping in the breeze. And I support mine using um, some little foam tape in here. So this foam tape is doubled over twice and then tucked in there on both sides. And that gives the flight controller some nice stability from wobbling around and gives it some protection from <coughs> going fore aft too. Um, it does increase risk of that foam tape pulling little components off the bottom of the board. So do that at your own risk. Another option is to just use uh, stronger hardware in here to mount it up a little bit with a little bit more rigidity. I like to use nylon, but if you want to go up and use um, uh, reinforced nylon or steel or something like that, maybe that gives you enough rigidity here to be able to use just the two holes and get away with that uh, without problems. Um, as you can see here now, I call this the diamond layout, the native whoop, um, where lengthwise the board is diamond shape. And that comes into where that was the where the length of this comes into play. So 
To get the clearance for the camera, what I needed to do is the front hole is actually pushed back a tiny bit and the back hole is pushed back a little bit. And so that gives you enough room that when you mount this up diamond style like that, that it'll give clearance for the camera even with a pretty decent amount of tilt. If you go nuts with it, yes, you're going to run out of room um, and maybe you want to pop the board over. But if you're going nuts with the camera tilt, then this is probably not the right thing for you anyways. Um, so in terms of what that means, I'll use, show you an example. So um, on my other builds, the Sky Star, Skyrider builds, um, these are a little bit more tucked in. And I'll show you the difference here with the two frames overlaid. So let's get those lined up for you. So you can see there's a difference there. It's not huge, but it does make some difference in terms of spreading the weight out where the camera's more forward and the back end is further back. And so the weight is gonna be spread out more on that um, pitch axis. That was also important to do even if you want the 16 by 16 stack because with this stack, so now on this frame you got plenty of room. I did try and squeeze this stack style build into the Skyrider frame and that was just crazy, crazy tight. It limited how much camera tilt you could do and that's just like insanely tight build. I mean you could take the receiver and throw it up there someplace else but you're just making kind of like a bunch of build compromises um, and so on the Warpig frame you've got plenty of room for it and now obviously with my Warpig frames um, I'm doing all my frames now to do these zip tie canopies and so that's why we got these nice straight bars across here and then also where I have these nubs or screw holes on the final frame one of the things that does is it prevents the zip ties from sliding back and forth across the midline and gives you a little extra stability, lets you line up the camera easier. Um, okay, so um, in, in terms of these compromises, if so, obviously, the, so the Skyrider frame on the fore aft um, and also on so on the pitch axis and on the roll axis, it's going to be the tightest in terms of keeping all your mass um, in centered. And then versus, well, <clears throat> um, versus on the Warpig where it's going to stretch it out. Also, if you go diamonds, you can notice that the diamond's going to stretch that out even further than if you're going with the square, um, which is square orientation. You can see it on this board easier. The square orientation on the, um, on the Skyrider frames. Also, I should point out too that on this frame, on the Warpig, if you want to tuck it in like this, you can actually do that by simply having the zip ties, instead of popping the zip ties forward like I have them here, you can pop them backwards and that tucks everything in to where you can close down the space and get a, a slightly more tucked in build. So um, that gets us going with our um, weight distribution on the on the pitch axis. So, and then there's also to be considered, you know, the the vertical height of it. When we think about the weight distribution, what we want to think about is, though, when we're thinking about height, is where is that height relative to um, where the the quad is actually going to be rolling? And although it's not perfect, because when when we're doing, for example, if we're doing a snap roll the center of rotation isn't exactly between the props it's a little bit above it because we can't actually make these props go negative unless you're flying 3d so when we're doing a snap roll it's not perfectly just rolling i don't know if i can get this in the camera it's not perfectly rolling right between the props it's actually going to be kind of going up and over and so if we think about that then the center of rotation is actually up a little bit higher so when I'm thinking about purely on the roll axis, I think this taller build, um, or on the pitch axis, the taller builds do make some sense because in general, unless you're going way above the prop line, you're probably actually coming a little bit closer to the natural point of rotation. Now, I think this stops being true when you talk about like, so Diatone made those cubes where you know, you've got the camera sitting up above a 16 by 16 stack and it's a three layer 
and it's you know sitting way up there and then it may create some wonky things also if you go top mount um, battery that may create some wonky things as well um, in general I honestly think I'd be pretty hard-pressed to tell the difference in terms of for example um, you know a Skyrider layout versus uh, a Warpig layout if you're on 2S or above. On 1S, particularly if we're talking about 1S on, on uh, 1102s, on this frame, this thing is so, I wouldn't call it underpowered, it's just that it's so weight sensitive that if you're flying 1102s with these tiny 65 millimeter press-ons, this is gonna be super, super sensitive to your weight and your weight distribution. And I think on this one, you would likely notice a difference if you built it out kind of stretched versus so if you went this is the older uh, like a 110 frame but if you went Warpig versus the um, the Skyrider frame um, I think you would feel the difference and that's one of the reasons for these um, with these 1102 mounts um, I'm not offering a Warpig version of this I'm saying just a Skyrider and one of the reasons to do that is because I want people if they buy the frame to be not that I want to control people, um, but I think it can be overwhelming with how many choices you can throw up on Armitan because it's like, who cares, you're not stocking it, just do another design, throw it up there. But I want the frames to kind of naturally guide people into builds that are going to work well and people are going to be happy with. And that's part of the reason I've um, kind of gone away a little bit from my earlier build style without the zip tie canopy with like the 114, 116. Those are still there, and for the hardcore people, if you want to do it, it's there. But I think overall, the zip tie canopy works better for more people. So, anyways, the point being, if you're on 1S and you're on this type of build with 1102 65 millimeter props, I think you got to go with this. I think you got to go with Skyrider or the 114, and you don't want to push it to the War Pig. I think it will make a difference that you can start to appreciate. Um, I don't think that's going to be as true as you go up to like 1103s and either um, 2S props or if 1S if you're talking about uh, so 2S on 65 millimeter or 2.5 inch or if you're talking about flying this with um, 3 inch props I don't think that that's quite as critical so one of the places where I think you should seriously consider the Warpig frame versus a Skyrider frame is if you're looking at something like this with um, you know 3 inch props and you're thinking about maybe using a 1 to 2S board, um, the Warpig may be a slightly better option for you than the Skyrider if you think, well, maybe I want to mount it um, slightly longer layout, or if I want to move the camera forward to get a little bit less props in view. Um, I think once you get up to the 3-inch props, it's going to be handling it well enough to where I don't think that little difference in the weight distribution is going to make that much um, difference. Um, also things to consider, uh, batteries, so mounting them, you know, longitudinal versus horizontal, that does make a huge difference. So this is a ton of weight and you're spreading it out, um, you know, pretty differently in terms of on the different, you know, pitch versus roll axis. And so I, I definitely think if you're, if you're, with these 1S cells, you know, with your own 450s or uh, 525s. And interestingly enough, I, I just got some of these, and these weigh up essentially the same as the 450s. So they are a little bit touch longer. I don't know if you can see that. So slightly worse weight distribution on these, but in terms of if that's a real difference in the MAH, then, um, you know, I, it's hard to see what the point of the 450s is if these actually really do have that much more capacity. But if you're doing lightweight um, 2S builds then, or 3S, I highly recommend thinking about going with these little Weasley guys, these little tiny 300s or 350s. And the reason for that is that's just gonna keep your weight tucked in far better than if we go out to, so for example, these are just 2S 525s, and these are coming off a wing bill, that's why they got foam tape on them. 
but you can see if we take that flap 25 and stick it under there that's definitely going to make a difference in how this thing handles and yes you gain some capacity yes it's going to be a little bit less sag on punch outs things like that but that's enough to where I would expect that this would need a different tune and one of the things that makes me crazy too about some of these batteries is where who needs this much wire why why does anybody need that much wire on these things especially on the balance lead this balance lead should be like you know like that's why I like these guys this is how long your balance lead should be you don't need it longer than that don't make it longer than that I don't know why they do it but um, because the, the battery leads should be short and then if to adjust it to your frame make your battery leads off your frame cut that to size like that's where the flexibility should come in rather than dealing with this crazy nonsense but anyways um i think if we want more capacity on 2s to fly in these tiny little micros we need a different shape cell we need more of a square shaped cell so that we're not totally throwing off our weight distribution on that axis the other thing to consider too is remember the vertical axis so um, we talked about our prop line is up above a little bit here and so really where we want to be throwing this weight is not down here swinging off the bottom of it and not way up here we actually want our weight in there and I've actually been kicking around a little idea for that I'm not sure if it's gonna be worthwhile because um, it adds weight but maybe on the 2s it's worthwhile Uh, let's see if I can get this in here. Hang on a second. Sorry. Blank screen time with nothing entertaining going on. It's like rule number uh, 332 never to violate. I, I don't know. I just made that up. Um, so I kind of kicking around this idea of why not bring the battery up in here. You may need a little bit extra prop. You may need to oversize the frame a little bit to have, ensure good prop clearance. But this little guy would bring our weight up right at prop line and then the question is how much then weight are you throwing down below to do these little skid plates and protection for the flight controller now if you're absolutely nuts and you didn't want to do this you could obviously just put the flight controller down there and maybe put just like a little piece, piece of plastic like cut out like a uh, milk jug or something to give it a little protection that way uh, which I think to me it would be a little bit scary, but maybe some people want to do it. But if we think about optimizing weight distribution, this is probably it um, in terms of getting it to where it's optimal on these little micros. Especially, you can see here we've got some more room. If we kind of squish this in more and made it a little bigger that way, um, then we could really optimize the weight distribution um, really nicely that way. What else? I don't know if that, I hope that sort of answers a little bit of that weight distribution question. Um, oh, last point, and I forgot to bring it out here. Um, universal mounts, like going crazy with the mounts, um, and also the big nubbins you see off the mounts to protect uh, motors and things like that. Here's why I don't do that. So I, my mounts are super minimal, and the reason I don't do that is because think about where you're sticking that weight. So Obviously with motors, right, we have, we have no choice. If we want to produce thrust out of the motors, the motors are going to weigh more and you're going to stick them out at the corners right where you don't want the weight. But that doesn't have to be true with our frames. And so, for example, Flex RC has these big old paddles with this nice, like, it's nice in terms of having the flexibility of it. You can mount every single uh, motor style on there, but it's a big old paddle. It's a ton of weight, and you're throwing that weight out at the ends where you absolutely don't want it. Weight towards the middle affects you less because it's just less work to rotate it, both in terms of you got more leverage over it. Also, when you are rotating the frame, it just moves less distance, so it requires less effort. And so I think you got better control, better pit authority, and all the rest of it. So that's why I think it's important to keep the, the motor mounts really and truly as minimal as possible because any extra weight on here, you're totally compounding it versus throwing it more in the middle of the frame there. Um, no flying. Um, 
but introduction. So Warpig Pig 120, um, and also 110. I forgot if I talked about the weight. Eh, it doesn't matter. So this comes in at like 4.1 grams. This will come in at 4.2s, tenth of a gram difference. Um, the three millimeter version of this, you can just do, it's just simple math, it adds up. Um, divide this weight by two and multiply it by three to get your three millimeter weight. And I think that's what I have for this one. Okay, until next time, cheers.